Today, I'm going to be talking about the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. This was the first type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome to be recognized, and that's why we call it the classical type. People who have classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome have generalized joint hypermobility, which is defined by the Byton scale, and they also have very stretchy skin and skin that is extremely fragile. It breaks really easily. There are two major criteria for the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and they are the presence of the skin hyperextensibility and the typical scars that we see with the fragility of the skin. So those two together are one of the major diagnostic features, and then generalized joint hypermobility is the second major feature. And we can make a diagnosis clinically of the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome if a person has both skin hyperextensibility, which is extreme, and atrophic scarring and generalized joint hypermobility. We can also make a diagnosis clinically of the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome if a person has one major criteria and three of the minor criteria. So they may have skin hyperextensibility and atrophic scarring as a major criteria, or they may have generalized joint hypermobility as a major criteria. And then the minor criteria criteria are the following. Easy bruising, soft, doughy skin, the skin fragility I mentioned earlier. They may have something called molluscoid pseudotumors, which are fleshy lesions over the elbows and knees that are usually associated with scars. They may have subcutaneous spherules. And these are kind of small, hard granules underneath the skin. They're movable, and they're due to fat lobules that have lost their blood supply and calcified. Hernia is another minor feature of the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and a person may have had an umbilical hernia or an inguinal hernia, and they may have it at the time they're being evaluated, or it might be a history of a hernia. Epicanthal folds are another one of the minor criteria, and these are skin folds that extend from the upper lid across the inner corner of the eye. And they may completely cover the inner corner of the eye, or they may just partially extend from the upper lid toward the lower lid on that inner corner. Another minor criteria are, is the complications of joint hypermobility, and these may include sprains or subluxations or dislocations of the joints or the chronic pain that we sometimes see in conjunction with joint hypermobility. And finally, the last minor criteria is the presence of a family history of classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, where there is a first-degree relative, so that would be a parent or a sibling or a child, who has had a confirmed diagnosis of the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So once a person has been evaluated using these clinical criteria, and if they meet the clinical criteria, it's recommended that they do genetic testing in order to confirm the diagnosis. Now, the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is caused by pathogenic variants or disease-causing changes in the DNA in the two genes that encode type 5 collagen, and these are called COL5A1 and COL5A2. Classical EDS is an autosomal dominant condition, which means that you need only a single copy of a variant in order to have the condition, and that DNA variant may be inherited either from the mom or from the dad, or it may occur as a new variant or a de novo variant in 
in the DNA of the person to whom we are speaking or who's being evaluated. Rarely, we may see someone who meets the clinical criteria for classical EDS who has a pathogenic variant in the gene called COL1A1, which is one of the genes encoding type 1 collagen. But this is very unusual. Most people with classical EDS have type 5 collagen variants. So this is a brief overview of the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. If you're looking for more information, you can find it on the Ehlers-Danlos Society website at ehlers-danlos.com. Thank you so much for spending the time with me today, and I wish you the very best on your journey.